T minus 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, engine, engine start, 1, 0, and liftoff of the Delta II rocket with Kepler on a search for planets in some way like our own. Kepler is our next giant leap in our search for planets around other stars. When it launched, almost 350 exoplanets had been discovered. Kepler's advanced 0.95 meter Schmidt telescope and photometer should detect another 10,000 more. Crucially, as many as 50 may be rocky worlds in habitable zones like our Earth. Many new varieties of exoplanet are going to be discovered um, over the next few decades. Um, the recent launch of Kepler is a very exciting development which um, is set to do space-based transit observations at an extremely high level of accuracy. Um, the idea is to, uh, to potentially detect Earth-like planets that are transiting Sun-like stars that um, uses something called the transit technique to um, identify planets. Uh, the transit technique takes advantage of um, the possibility that, that some planet's orbits are going to be aligned in such a way that every time the planet orbits the star, it passes across the face of the star with respect to the observer. It seems remarkable that a planet passing in front of its star, perhaps dozens, hundreds or even thousands of light years away, can block enough of the star's light to create a detectable dip in brightness. Kepler will monitor 100,000 stars, patiently waiting for the telltale signature of a light curve as a planet moves in front of its star, causing a dip in light perhaps as small as a mere ten thousandth of the star's total light. To be sure it is a planet, multiple but periodic dips must be observed as the planet moves around and around its star. For a world as far from its sun as Earth is, it could take several years for this confirmation to come. On the other hand, gas giants orbiting close to their suns, with orbits of a few days, can be confirmed in just a matter of weeks or months. It's a mark of how techniques and technology for hunting exoplanets has progressed, that space telescopes aren't necessarily required to detect transits, as students at University College London's Mill Hill Observatory recently found out. We realised a few years ago that with a number of the really interesting exoplanets that were being discovered, and several of them were known to transit and pass in front of their parent stars, these stars are actually relatively bright, and we realised that we could observe them even from the UK, even from London, because we could take images of these fields and with careful enough observations and careful enough reduction of the data that we obtain, you can tell the, the small dip in light that occurs when the planet passes in front of the star. So we realized we could measure that and now there are so many transiting targets known, there are over 50 known, that almost on any clear night in the UK you could look up and you know that there's a transit taking place. Many of the transiting objects are so-called hot Jupiter planets which orbit their parent stars in just a few days, so the transits are very frequent. So then we've recruited a team of undergraduates to come in and to come in effectively to sign up on any clear night and to come in and make observations in order to, uh, to observe these transits which would require pointing one of our telescopes at it and taking images for several hours continuously and then processing the data and looking for the telltale signal that the planet has passed in front. It's um, very dense. It's, um four Jupiter masses and one Jupiter radius, so quite denser than Jupiter, and it has the, has the most eccentric orbit ever observed on exoplanets, and therefore it um, comes quite close to its host star, and it undergoes an 800-fold intensity increase of the star's radiation, so it heats up and cools down quite spectacularly. So. The planet the students observed coming under the moniker HD 80606b, was already known to astronomers, and its orbit is highly eccentric, bringing the planet as close as 4.5 million kilometers from its star, and then back out again every 111 days. We don't um, observe in the dome because we need to keep the dome as dark as possible, so we operate the telescopes from the control room, and we just um, make sure that the telescope's um, pointing at the star, uh, make sure that it's tracking properly, and just um, tell it to take lots of pictures. Uh, all we have to really do is make sure that the dome's in the right position um, so that we can see the star clearly. 
The planet's plunging orbit means its atmosphere heats up from 530 degrees Celsius to a scorching 1200 degrees Celsius. How about that for a case of sunburn? These temperature measurements were made by NASA's Spitzer Space Telescope. When the planet moved behind its star, astronomers at the University of California in Santa Cruz were able to subtract the planet's light and heat from that of the star, and to be able to separate the two. The temperature gradient results in howling winds in the planet's atmosphere. If Kepler succeeds in its mission, it will find many more of these weird and wonderful worlds, which would otherwise be lost in the glare of their star. Kepler will transform our knowledge of extrasolar planets, and perhaps out there, somewhere, there is another Earth, just waiting to be found.